writing and citing a philosophical paper. It seems that um, in our modern academic community, uh, people learn to write papers in an English department who tends to teach them their way of doing things without realizing that uh, other departments do things in a different fashion. So I need to kind of instruct you on uh, how to write and specifically how to cite a philosophical paper. The parts of the paper are the cover page, the introduction, the body, the conclusion, and the bibliography. And so any paper, regardless of size, is going to need to have those five basic elements. The cover page, which gives the title and your name and so on. The introduction, which talks about the um, paper itself, what it is that you're going to be discussing. The body, which is the bulk of your paper, your, your arguments and so on. And the conclusions that you reach. And of course, at the end, the bibliography to explain uh, what it is or where it is, rather, that you got your information. The cover page should contain the title, whatever your article is going to be called, the author, that's you, your class number, your class name, and the date that it's being turned in. So in the example that we have on the screenshot here, you can see we have the title there centered in bold print, Transcending Morality in the Bhagavad Gita, uh, by and then your name, Jane Q. Student, uh, whoever you happen to be. And uh, then you want the course number. Uh, so, for example, Philosophy 2700 or Philosophy 21002. Um, the title of the class, in this case, Ethics. And the date in which it would be um, delivered. For example, today is the 24th of September, 2015. So, that's what your cover page should look like and what it should entail. When you get into writing the paper, the first thing is, of course, the introduction. The introduction is your opening paragraph. It's going to explain to the reader what your paper is going to be about. It's not a place for introducing facts, analysis, or opinions. You're simply laying out, here's what I'm going to be discussing in this paper. The body of your paper is the main part. It's where you give your facts, you analyze your data, you explain your position. So this is where you're putting forth all of the evidence. This is where you're making your argument, your basic claim. Now, as it says there, philosophical papers are different than in other disciplines. In most cases, when you do an English paper or a history paper or something like that, they're, they're stressing to you to leave yourself out of it. Don't use words like I and me. Uh, stick just to the, the cold hard facts. But in a philosophy paper, you want to put yourself into that paper. You are the one who's doing the analysis. You're the one that's making the discoveries. So I'm reading this to find out your thoughts, not what somebody else has, has written about it. You know, it's certainly okay to rely upon authority as long as that's a legitimate authority. But you need to do your own analysis too. Make sure you put yourself into that paper. Don't be afraid of words like I. The big issue here is the question of footnoting. Um, a lot of times nowadays people use this in uh, per, uh, parenthetical uh, in paper citation. And it's really an aggravating system because it destroys the whole flow of your paper. You know, you're reading along and then all of a sudden here's all this nonsense that has nothing to do with anything that is uh, parenthetically slipped into the paper and it just blots out everything you've just read and really, really aggravates people. So footnoting is a much better technique and it's the one that's preferred by the philosophy department. Um, with a footnote, you know, you're reading along and there's this little superscript number at the top that will direct you to the bottom of the page where you've got the information if you want to find it but if you just want to carry on with the flow of the paper, you can do that without that interruption. Uh, so it's a much nicer system. Now footnotes are included in the paper to tell the reader where your information come from, uh, comes from. They will protect you from charges of plagiarism. You know, that's one of the big issues in writing, is to make sure that you're not stealing, whether intentionally or not, someone else's information. 
you want to make sure that it, you know, your analysis is yours, and if you're taking someone from so something from somewhere else, that you give credit where credit's due. Footnotes go at the bottom of the page to reference the source of a direct quote or a paraphrase. So when you come to the end of a direct quote or a paraphrase of information, you want to go to your toolbar and click on where it says References. And under References, you'll get your toolbar there again, and you'll see a spot that says Insert Footnote. So click on Insert Footnote. And the computer does all the work for you, basically. It's going to input the superscript number into the paper. It takes you to the corresponding number at the foot of the page, and there you type in your reference information. If you're citing a book, which is definitely preferred, um, then you would want the author of that book, comma, the title, and remember book titles are always italicized, comma, and then in parentheses, the city, colon, the publisher, comma, and the date, uh, comma, and then at the end, the page number that that information was taken from. If you're citing a website, you want the author, assuming there is one, there's not always with a website, uh, but the title, again, italicize, the URL, and the date that you accessed it. You want the date accessed because websites are changed periodically, and so if somebody were to go back and try to look up the information that you claimed was there and couldn't find it, one of the things that may have happened is that the website has changed or updated and uh, if that's the case, then you could look down at the bottom of the screen and see when that was updated and compare that to the date that you claim to have found that information. So that's why date access goes on there. And if you wanted to cite a lecture or a speaker of some sort, you would put the name of the speaker, the title of the lecture, and the date of that lecture. So on the screen here, we have a sample of what a page might look like. Uh, so if you are reading along, let me see if I can make that a little bigger for you. There we go. You can see in the first example, it says, Arjuna looks out upon those assembled and Sri Krishna foresees the thoughts about this event in Arjuna's heart, and then you see the little superscript 1. Well, down at the bottom you see the footnote for that. In this case, Arnold Smith, The Moral World, San Diego, Cognella, 2015, page 23. So that would give you an idea of what a book reference would look like. Uh, the next quote, I won't read through that, but you see the superscript 2 there, and this one's from a website. So again, uh, author, title, URL, and date access. In this case, Srila Prabhupada, Bhagavad Gita as it is, www.asitis.com, 24th of September, 2015. Now if you look at the third quote, um, you'll see a little three there uh, as your superscript. And when you look down below at the footnote, you see simply the word IBID, I-B-I-D. IBID is a Latin abbreviation that's used in footnoting to reference the uh, last referenced thing. So, in other words, if this is a direct quote taken from the exact same source as the one above, you don't need to write it all out again. Uh, all you do is use that word IBID, and that says it's a direct reference to what is above. So the person seeing that would know that's Prabhupada's um, writing. And the fourth quote, Again, you see the superscript 4 there, hopefully. And down below there on the footnote, it simply says Smith, comma, page 23. So if you've referenced something once, the first time that you put it into the paper is the only time that you have to give the full footnoting. Uh, after that, you will, again, if it's simply uh, the, quote, the, the uh, quote is taken from the same source that you've just used previously, you can use the IBID, or if it's from a source that was used previously within the paper, uh, you simply use the last name of the author along with the page number. So that's the way that footnoting works. It gives all the relevant information, and it does it without distorting uh, or harming the paper uh, and our ability to read and enjoy it.
the conclusion of your paper is your final paragraph and this is where you recap your findings. There should be no new information, thoughts, or ideas incorporated into the paper at this time. All that goes into the body. Uh, the conclusion, you're basically saying, what is it that we've learned from this paper? The bibliography is the last page of your paper, and this is where you list all of the sources that you referenced in the paper. These are listed alphabetically by the last name of the author, and if there is no author, you place a line where the author's name should be. Those go first and are alphabetized by the title. Again, if we look at this particular example of a bibliography page, you can see how this plays out. So on the top line there, you have Holy Bible, uh, which does not have a specific author. So you see there's a line there, comma, and then the title. Again, it's set up in the same way that we did it in the uh, footnoting. Uh, author, title, and then in parentheses, city, publisher, and date. Uh, in the bibliography, you do not list page numbers because you're listing the whole book source. The page numbers are for the individual footnotes. Uh, and then when you get down to the specific uh, books that have an author, then you see that they're put in there in alphabetical order. Um, so there, there's Aquinas, and then Aristotle, and then Berman, and so on. So you put it all in alphabetical order. So once you're done, of course, you can put all that stuff together, and there is your uh, paper. So to recap all of this in writing the philosophical paper, you want the cover page. Your paper needs to have an introductory paragraph, the main body, which is where you give your, your main analysis, and the conclusion in a bibliography. Print it out, staple it together, turn it in, and you've got a nice paper.